Hello YouTube. I know I haven't really updated in a long time, but um, I thought I'd probably make a quick video real fast to let you guys know what's going on. Uh, most of what was going on was not good. Uh, now it's a little bit better, but it's still kind of shitty. But I'm still like, you know, getting through it and stuff like that. Um, I'm doing what I have to do. Uh, basically, I had moved out of my mom's house uh, in McDonald, and it was because of all of the fighting that was going on in my house. Uh, people weren't getting along, and it was really hard to deal with that, and I was on the verge of suicide. So I up and left. I asked my grandmother and my dad in Florida if I can move with them. Um, and so I did. I packed all my shit, and I left. Um, when I got there, somehow we got into the conversation, me and my dad, uh, about the past, and I said I do forgive him and my mom both for what they put me through. Um, and somehow, you know, it got brought up that, uh, he never hit my mom. Uh, you know, I've watched that man hit my mom ever since I was little. I've watched him threaten him and threaten us kids. He was just a very abusive person. Uh, he was very caught up in drugs, and we didn't know it. Uh, that's why he was in rehab. He also tried to commit suicide and told my sister in his driveway in Risher Road in Boardman. Uh, years and years and years ago, when she was like 12, he told her that. Because uh, him and my mom were not talking. Um, but like I said, like he's been, he's been arrested a couple times uh, for domestic violence. And he denied it. And even my grandmother is siding with him. So that also, that left a bad taste in my mouth. And I was just kind of freaking out because it was really hot there and I hated it. Uh, I didn't really have friends and all of my friends are here. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, you know, and my grandmother's boyfriend was a drunk and obnoxious and I couldn't stand him. And my grandmother... You know, I tried to like her, but I just was not able to. Um, I just, I don't know. Like, she would insult me and then laugh about it, think it was funny. And just shit like that. I struggled getting jobs and stuff when I was down there. Uh, the good thing about being in Florida, I went to this, uh, it's like a career center. And I met a really awesome guy named Chris Mahan. And... Like, he really inspired me to do the things I want to do. He teach me. He taught me how to goal set and how to follow something that I've wanted all my life, which is special effects makeup. Um, you know, I am willing to work normal jobs to get to my goal, and that's what I plan on doing. I plan on driving still. I was on and off about driving down there uh, because I had very little motivation living in that kind of environment, knowing that, you know, uh, I was living with someone who was living a lie. I never thought anybody could be worse than my mom, but I surely did forget that all the stuff that my dad did and what he caused the both of us kids to go through, um, you know, all of those years and just the holidays have not been enjoyable because of him and everything else. Um, so, uh, I basically got a job at JCPenney's and everything was going fine. Um, but I only had two cups of coffee and some, like, biscuit rolls, um, in the morning, and that was it. Uh, and I be I began to feel like I was gonna faint, so I asked one of my coworkers if I can have some water, she gave me some. I still felt a little faint, and it was getting worse, and my anxiety was also pretty bad that day. Because it was my first day, you know, and I didn't want to, my fear was to, to, that I was gonna pass out in front of a lot of people. Um, so... I told my manager, and I rushed to the back. I got lots of water, and I asked for a candy bar and stuff. And I basically asked my manager, you know, if I clock out, am I going to get fired? Uh, and she said no. And I finally called my dad and told him I need, I need him to pick me up, uh, and he refused to uh, at first. So I was freaking out even more, and I felt still like I was going to pass out. So I called my mom and my aunt, and my mom bitched him out and finally got him to pick me up. He was probably going to, probably going to, like, let me, like, literally sit there because he said I was overreacting, and I'm just trying to run away from my problems, and I'm as weak as my mom, and I give up just like my mom, 
And he threw something in my face in the lines of, you know, like he has a criminal record. So he has a hard time getting jobs. Uh, and plus he's diagnosed with schizophrenia. So now he's on disability for it and refuses to work. But yet he knows how to be hypocritical and throw it up in my face. Uh, basically he said I was forced, he was, he was forced to, uh, work a job to pay for child support or he would have went to prison for it. And he was throwing up and everything else and couldn't uh, call off a day. I think honestly, he was envious that I could. And then I have that advantage. Uh, normal people usually do call off when they're sick. I know in certain circumstances, people really can't. Uh, but I was able to. There was nothing holding me back. There was nothing life-threatening. Um, and I understand that situation where people are sick and they still have to go to work. And my heart goes out to people like you. It really I, it really does, you know. So, yeah, basically that's what was, that's what's been going on. And the last straw was when he told me that I was as weak as my mom. And he was sending really nasty texts to her. And he just it was making it like a big joke. And I can hear my grandmother in the background when I was talking to my dad laughing like it was like it was nothing. And I felt very I felt like I was stabbed in the back and I felt like I was manipulated just to make my dad happy because he's afraid to come back to Ohio. For whatever reason, you know, he's a 49 year old man who still lives with his mom. Uh, and I never thought that he could be worse than my mom, but I forgot all of those years of pain that he caused me. And before I left, I said, can you even admit that what you did was wrong? And he just kept refusing it and kept saying that he never did that. Uh, but I had already packed the night before. Uh, I snuck in his room and I got my suitcase. I packed everything up. I wanted to sneak out in the middle of the night. I really wasn't even really willing to deal with the reactions of my grandma or my dad. Uh, unfortunately, I had to deal with both of their reactions. Luckily, uh, my dad or my grandmother didn't get violent or anything. My grandmother just kind of backed off, and my dad chased me down the street. And I was so pissed I couldn't even say goodbye. Uh, you know, I apologized for the way I said goodbye. Um, you know, he's still in my life. I still love both of my parents no matter what. I still talk to my dad. I still love the both of my parents, like I said. Um, but yeah, I moved back here with my mom. Like, even though it's not the best here and people still get in fights and it's still not good and what my mom did was horrible, but she did call me and actually did apologize to me. Uh, you know, but I don't think that she's going to be absolutely perfect or stop doing what she did because they're still arguing here. It's not as bad as it used to be, but at least she apologized and admitted what she did in the past. She kept my dad, uh, even though they fought and she kept him because she didn't want to take him away from, uh, us kids. Uh, and she apologized for that. And she said, you can come back here anytime you want. I came back here cause I just think it's a lot better. I think I'll get a lot more help here. You know, and I have a lot more friends here, and I was just miserable in Florida. There was not, there was not much I can do. Like, it, when I feel like I am betrayed in any way, I turn my back on that person. Um, the only reason I haven't really turned my back on my dad is because he is my dad. Uh, most people might say that I should, but, uh, you know, I still want to talk to him. I still love him no matter what, and I, I forgive him, but it's just like... It's just been ridiculous. So, you know, I do want to re I have reuni reunited with old friends and I still want to meet up with uh, some some of my friends that I've been talking to over Facebook for a long time. One or actually two lives in Michigan, uh, my friend Cross and his girlfriend and uh, my friend Angie and all of them in Cleveland. Um, you know, I do eventually want to touch base with them and hang out with them and create memories and just live my life. I'm not going to let this knock me down, but I am back in Ohio. I'm back in McDonald. Uh, if you're watching this cross, I, I did message you, but I, I know that things have been probably crazy or busy or what have you. Um, 
But yeah, like I just wanted to touch base with you guys because I know I really haven't been uploading a lot. But I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an update. I am okay, you know. Uh, I, I do plan to keep uploading. I do plan to get uh, an actual laptop and a good camera once I have enough money. Uh, so until next time, guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm sorry for the sad news, but in the future, there will be a lot more happier news. So see you guys later.